Hey everybody, welcome back to the Old Swedes Farm. It's Rich. I got a great question sent to me and it's something I haven't even talked about. Uh, uh, I've talked a little bit about uh, deep, the deep litter method that we use out in the pole barn. But um, I had someone send an email and said, what's the best bedding that you use for your coop? Great question. Um, before I answer, let me give a bit of an intro here. When I'm talking about your coop, I'm out with the littles here, I'm talking about the coop. Uh, it's our eight foot by eight foot enclosed coop um, that's got uh, roosts in it where the girls sleep at night. I am not talking about the run. I'm not talking about the run where they can hang out during the day uh, or I let them free range, but I'm not talking about the run. Um, and, I, and I'll talk about the pole barn as a separate, but I'm talking about where they spend their nights in the coop. Um, now, when uh, my girls come in, they've got the roost, they get up on the roost, a lot of times they drop at night, it falls down into what a lot of people call bedding. We call it litter. Uh, just think of leaf litter, like out in a, in a forest, the leaf litter and stuff falls, birds are up in the canopy during the day and at night they're dropping into that litter and it breaks down. Same thing here, uh, just different bedding or litter. Um, so I'll use those terms interchangeable. The number one thing that you could use for um, your bedding or litter is coarse medium grain sand. And I'm not talking playground sand. If you're using playground sand, I would urge you not to. Um, coarse medium grain sand, usually you're going to get it from a, a, a gravel pit or someplace. It is small chips of rock, um, pebbles size. It's, it's bigger than coarse grain sand. What you're thinking of beach sand or kids sand for your, your sandbox, that's not it. That is not good because um, that what you want out of your bedding is something that will stay dry and yet absorb what is dropped on it. Um, if you use this coarse grain sand, it stays dry. Um, it does not uh, promote bacteria growth. Um, wh when you get bacteria growth, you get ammonia. When you get a lot of ammonia, it's not good for your hens, not good for your chickens. Um, I, I've got the, the back door open here and one of the girls tried to get up, so sorry about the noise. Um, the, the problem, the girls, if you're using that medium grain sand, the nice thing is the girls can dust bathe in it. They could eat a few of them um, to help kind of break down their food. Um, if you're using small grain sand, that playground sand, the problem is it can impact, impact their crop. Uh, you can get an impacted crop. Um, it's just not good for them. So um, shy away from that playground sand. Uh, the, the draw of playground sand typically is the chickens will drop. You can use like a little cat litter thing, kind of scoop it up and the sand will stay. Uh, but you'll be able to scoop up the poop and then any little sand. You can do that with the medium grain uh, sand just as easy. The downside to all that is you gotta put it somewhere. Um, you can't put it out in your compost pile or you're gonna have a ton of sand out there. So kind of the downfall. The, the option that I've chosen for our coop, and I'll show you, is pine shavings. Um, now this is this is the coop in action. We've got 40 girls in here um, And I've got about four inches of pine shavings now the girls come in at night. They drop you can see droppings uh, In and amongst there the girls do turn it over um, as they're uh, Kind of moving around during the day um, It doesn't stick to their feet um, It's organic it will uh, uh, it it will absorb bacteria and moisture. Um, the one nice thing about pine shavings, and the reason why I use it, it comes in nice bales that you can grab. They're like a foot tall, two and a half or three feet uh, long, uh, and foot and a half or two feet wide. 
they're pretty economical. Five, six bucks for a bale. I can use a bale in here and fill the whole thing up. They're really smashed pine shavings. Uh, so it's economical. When I'm done, it's got, you know, it's pine shavings. There's my, um, if you go back to my composting video, there's my carbon, is my pine shavings. All the droppings are the uh, nitrogen. I can put that right out of my compost pile and it starts breaking down. It starts composting right away. Um, so, you know, economic, it absorbs well. Uh, I can throw it out in the compost pile, unlike sand. It soaks up moisture. Um, for me, it's the way to go. Um, one real word of caution, um, I, and I've never heard of anybody using it, but if you find cedar shavings, don't use cedar shavings. There's a couple acids that are in the cedar. It's toxic to your girls. Um, they will eat a couple little you know, grains of, uh, of pine sawdust, they will eat some of that. Um, and if it's uh, cedar shavings, it's toxic. Please don't use that, use the pine shavings. The third method, and I would say don't use it, let's see if I can get my finger, don't use it in, in your coop, but yet I use it in my run for deep litter, and that is straw. Some people will use hay. I use straw. Um, it is very economical. Uh, bales are not that expensive. If I were to use pine shavings and put down several inches of pine shavings in the entire pole barn, that's hundreds of dollars uh, versus having, uh, you know, bring in a bale of hay or a couple bales at the start, let the girls move it around, they'll drop on it, bring in another bale, and through half the season, um, they spread it around, they drop on it, it breaks down. Straw holds moisture um, and there's a chance of bacteria. So that's where it's a down, the downside for this, um, using it in the coop. Um, but for me, straw, the girls will drop on it. It will soak up that moisture. Even though there's a chance of mold and bacteria, the girls kick it around enough and I have enough straw in there um, that the bacteria level does not get too high. If it got too high, I would notice ammonia smell. It would smell bad in there. So, well, hi. There's our escape route. Uh, you found the back door. Uh, I wouldn't put straw in, in here for the girls. Um, but if you've got a large, large area and you're gonna use deep litter method where you're continually adding to it till it's a certain thickness, and I use it all winter, then I remove it, um, then I think it's ideal. But for most people, for most people, using pine shavings is probably the way to go. Now I've seen people trying to use coffee shavings or coffee grounds, trying to use other organic materials um, I think because they want it to soak up odor. I really don't know what goes on with the bacteria in that. Um, I think, you know, coffee grounds, they hold moisture. So I think that's not a good thing. Um, personal opinion. So a lot of opinions on this channel. Um, so if you got questions on this, drop a note below. I'd love to have a great conversation about this, but my opinion for the price, for what it does, for how it controls bacteria, odors, etc. Pine shavings are the way to go. Um, the best would be that coarse, medium grain sand, but there's an expense getting it from a quarry. How do you dispose of it afterwards? Um, it doesn't break down into a compost like, like this does. Um, the, the benefits of this and the cost are, are too much for me to pass up. Um, and then I'll use straw out there. If you got questions, drop them below. Love to have a great conversation about this. It's a great topic. Um, if you've got other topics uh, or questions, send me an email. Uh, it's in the about section down below. Um, if you like the video, I don't I ask often, but if you like any of our videos, hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, a lot going on here with our chickens in our garden. Thanks for letting me get a little bit uh, long-winded about our bedding and uh, our litter and nope, no one's in there come uh, 
couple hours from now, right at sundown, we'll have 40 girls in there fighting for position on the roost. All right, everybody, have a great afternoon. Take care.